Hello everyone, welcome back to Cluster B Milk Chick. I am your host along with support puppet, Mr. Chicken. Yes! Today we're gonna to talk about the childlike narcissist and how they push this narrative, which isn't real, onto you and how you react to these tactics. Now, there are borderlines, there are vulnerable presenting narcissists out there who are not overtly grandiose and in your face and just trying to show off all the time um, that uh, are will show their vulnerabilities to you and some of these things that I'm going to read about they do feel that they are authentic and real to them um, until they learn about it and then they know that it was fucking bullshit. But a psychopathic person knows what they're doing. And for me, um, even though I know that I'm doing this, it's like some other entity takes over and I can't fucking stop it. It's just doing its thing, you know? It feel, you know, I used to have a picture painted of a monster face. And I'm like, that is what I'm trying to keep at bay all the time, but sometimes it just does its thing. Yes, that's me trying to say that I'm not in control. Don't get mad at me. But, you know, it. this is just what's happening. Okay? All right. So, the childlike psychopath, when you meet them, they will have their sob story or any things that, that is going to um, you know, bring up your empathetic feelings or because I like the darker side of the force and dudes, I want them to feel like they have some sense of control over me. Yes, this is a game that we're playing and we don't know the other one is playing the game, but this is what's happening. But for you, um, it's going to stir up your own sympathies, uh, empathetic feelings for them, um, and caregiving magical powers that you have. Okay, whatever. So um, they will also talk about their insecurities. So um, they can talk about uh, how they're insecure about their hair and their hair, you know, I would use that one. Um, you can uh, be like, oh my God, I'm getting fat. You know, that's another one. Um, you can talk about how, you know, you're basically you're making up feelings that you have that you do not have about whatever. It could be anything, a past friend, um, children, uh, parents, whatever they're going to reveal these things to you like you're being brought in this special circle of trust you know <laughs> then they will talk about how unhappy they were bored with life the people that they were dating sucked but you you make me happy. You're not boring. You're exciting. I really like being around you. Things like that, okay? So, um, also, if they're telling certain, um, you know, their struggles in the, or whatever, watch out for the ones that talk about their money struggles and stuff because I have this one dude, he's like, yeah, this chick, um, she wanted, you know, to have seafood for dinner, but she wanted me to buy it. I'm just like, ew, dude, you look gross. But maybe, you know, another person might be like, oh my God, I better, you know, put in my 50-50 so he doesn't think I'm taking advantage of him. <clears throat> All right. Another thing, another huge red flag is when they say, when they tell you something and then they say, my ex never believed me. My ex never believed that, you know, my struggles and or the thing that, you know, my past or my, you know, abuse or my fucking whatever, 
red flag. They fucking bring that up. They're planting a seed. That means you have to believe them or you're like their shitty ex. When somebody says that to me, I know you're lying. I'm not going to say anything, but I know you're lying. I want you to feel like you are trying to dupe me in some way. And I'm just like, well, I don't fucking trust anybody. So, all right. You see someone, uh, you see someone feel inferior and you know how to make them feel better. So, you know, when somebody is all sad and and you're like, no, no, don't feel that way. Oh, no, you're great. No. You know, when you're trying to fl flip the script, you're trying to turn their frown upside down. Now, this is normal for you and people who have, you know, a swarm of different rainbow color of feelings inside. It can also make you feel uncomfortable and trying to make somebody feel better, you know, is going to remove your uncomfortable feelings, maybe. Um, so yeah, they adore all of your efforts. Compare you to past exes. Idealize you above everyone else. Yes. Yes. You are going to be compared no matter what. Anyways, you are going to be, be compared. It is very easy to compare you to anyone. It's nothing special. Yes, you are better in this than my ex. Yes, you treat me better in this area than my ex did. Yes, you bring me a calm peace where my ex brought me chaos. Now, you don't know the whole fucking story of how that chaos came about, but, you know, it always takes two no matter what. There's never, you know, unless it's a serial killer coming after you and kidnapping your ass, you let the vampire into your home, into your chest. I'm not victim blaming. All right, here we go. Um, you come to a point where you start to believe in your healing capabilities through your kindness and compassion because it's being mirrored back to you that these things are working. You are putting in the effort. You are making them feel better. Whether it's um, they really are a, you know, somebody who does have depression, anxiety, you're relieving it by letting them have control over you, your behaviors. <sighs> Next. All right. You become obsessed with proving your loyalty because you believe the problem is in their insecurities. Now, even if um, the root of the disordered minded person is insecurity. A psychopathic person feels nothing. They feel absolutely nothing. There is no shame. There is no remorse, regret, uh, nothing. Um, they don't feel low self-esteem or low self-worth. None of this. This is a game that they are playing to see if they can get you to react in a specific way, okay? So if you believe that they're, you know, insecure and you're gonna make sure that you're going to, you know, oh, here's my phone, oh, here's, you know, let me, let me show you, it's all a control issue. They, they just want control over you to make sure that you are doing your best to prove yourself to them. My ex and I did this, but that was not under any um, manipulative thing. We're just like, here's my phone. I want you to see that I'm not doing anything. And he, you know, did it in kind. So if there was any other manipulative thing where he wanted me to search his phone and look for some deception um, just to fuck with my head. I don't look because I don't give a fuck. I don't care. So um, nothing like that happened. 
all right? So I ain't going to make that shit up. But I wasn't doing anything either at that time. My, with my past people, you don't get to see my shit. I'm not proving nothing to you. I'm not proving my loyalty to you. You believe what you want. And if you want to leave, then fucking go. I'm not proving nothing. Okay. Uh, but you have to prove yourself right. If I start to attack you on those things, um, just to make you, and it would only be to make you feel uncomfortable. You know, because I'm, I don't give a fuck. As long as I'm getting what I want from you, you know, that's all that I care about. I mean, I was letting my ex-husband cheat and everything for a long period of time just so he would leave me alone. I didn't fucking care. He thought he was being sneaky, but I don't fucking care. I don't give a shit. Um, if you perceive them as childlike, your natural caregiving instincts will kick in because you're acting like the good parents and then mr chicken oh she's so cute <laughs> um yeah and, and this is an illusion too you know you put this up and then the, it confuses you to think oh you're so you're so sweet she's so sweet you know just trying to fucking be funny and stuff you know but um, you get to perceive me whatever way that you want. I can plant seeds in your head, but you are going to do all the work and the growing, you know, all those nice weeds in your head, you know? Um, caregiving, kicking, yes. Another thing that um, I do, because I want a good reflection from you, I want you to see I am taking care of you. I am a fucking prize. I am not doing it, you know, for, um, you know, I, I need you to clap your hands. Because if you don't clap your hands, the shit is going to stop. So with me, you better fucking clap your hands. Or I'm not doing it. I'm not going overboard to do more for you. If you do not appreciate what I do for you, it's going to fucking stop. All right. That's what you guys need to do. You need to stop if you are not getting a reciprocal treatment. And I'm not talking just words because um, a toxic person will be like, oh my God, thank you, thank you. And they don't do anything in return. Oh, I appreciate you so much. Or they cuddle you, you know? And and no, you, you have to pay attention to, you know, actual, actions and showing things because just saying oh my god no one's ever done this for me before that's good having you know i like somebody being grateful for the thing that i do but you need to be doing shit too not just i'm just going to keep doing it and you're just going to be a thank you thank you thank you sir may i have some more please May I have it? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You know? Thank you for sucking my dick. You know? Thank you. Okay. Your turn. You know? No, I'm fucking tired. <laughs> it's like, well, I hope you like that last stick set. Okay. Uh, let's see. Psychopaths see insecurities as a way to manipulate and control. That means your, not just your insecurities, but insecure us. Um, projecting that we do have insecurities for you to exploit as well. Uh, well, at least me, because I like, you know, the darker dudes. So if they, you know, it's like, I'm, gi I'm giving you some bait to, you know, try to fuck with me. And I mean, it's a game because then they try to fuck with me. And then I show them that, no, no, this isn't happening. <laughs> this isn't happening. And they'll either be um, punishments or covert type manipulations. And I'm all fucking blocked off here. Any um, care that I was having for you um, now just seems like a chore just to fucking be around you. Now it's all fucking illusion. It's all make-believe. Even the parts that I thought that I was like, oh my God, that idealization of you is going down. 
And I'm just like, why the fuck am I here? I'm bored. That's it. I'm bored. I don't want to just fucking sit home all the time. I'll come and fucking sit with you. Okay? All right. Uh, empathetic people seek to cure insecurities with love and compassion. Now, um, also watch out for the psychopathic person who's trying to fix your insecurities. Um, they don't give a shit, but they're going to put on a show that um, they're, they're, you know, your support system. They're, they're you know, um, although, you know, I don't know every single psychopathic person out there, but I will try to, you know, bring something positive to the table if I, you know, if I'm just like, if I know that my words don't even fucking help you, I don't say anything. I'm not going to say shit. So, um, you know, I gauge my people too. It's usually, you know, if you send love and light their way or and you make them feel powerful like they got this, you know, they're happy, you know, to be around you or they feel lifted up and not like you're um, an emotional vampire or something and just doom and gloom in it or whatever. But sometimes the person that you're hanging out with, they just want to vent and talk shit or whatever. And you're just like... You do it. You do you. You talk shit. Okay. You know? Um, I think somebody else who would get annoyed with that, they're going to start showing their annoyance of you having problems of your own. And this is just during the devaluation stage. So they're like, well, you're not doing for me. Now you're just complaining because you want me to do for you, do for you. No. <laughs> I mean, also, you think that, you know, the psychopathic person, narcissistic, whatever, um, actually cares about what you're going through. They only care if they have to show that they care because to keep you around. Because if they're, if they're at the tail end of the relationship and they don't care about keeping you around, they're just annoyed with you 24 the fuck 7. Okay. All right. When the psychopath came along, your self-worth was dependent on making other people happy. This is um, the codependency type individual where um, lifting people up, doing for them, you are getting your supply source of them being um, grateful or whatever, you know, that's filling you up. I'm burping. <sighs> All right. Um, you experience chemical changes, forming an immediate bond of love and trust. You were willing to do whatever it took to build up their happiness. Now, remember, we're talking about the ones that are faking um, sensitivities, insecurities, um, submissiveness. Uh, looking up to you, giving you the supply that you want of being a good caregiver, you know? These are the things that are um, going down to Chinatown. And um, where am I? Chemical uh, you were willing to do whatever it took. Okay, so now you're addicted to making this other person happy because they are reflecting that back at you okay and then now this is this is the bullshit that you um need to work on so you're not um an overgiver and you're not doing it um to get something in return listen to me i'm fucking you know i i'm who i am i'm telling you this is what i you know what i do and it's just like it's almost like I am a fucking robot and I do the fucking thing. But if you want to stop being taken advantage of, you need to stop. Me, it's a fucking game and just fucking baiting these dudes into seeing how they're going to react. You know, are you, you know, I'm going to stop right there. Okay. 
Um, in no time, the tables turn. Instead of reassuring the poor guy or girl, you found yourself desperate for their approval. So um, this is when you're gonna be, you know, worried or, you know, are you okay? How come you're, you're changing, you know, how you feel about me, what the fuck? And this is gonna mess with you and you're gonna feel insecure about yourself where um, somebody's taken away attention from me. Um, what the fuck is your problem? What the fuck is your problem? I'm gonna get angry and all of these, you know, it's going to come out onto you and I'm going to fuck with your peace of mind. I'm going to fuck with you. Or you just uh, withdraw attention and you're just like, fuck it. If you're not going to do, then I'm not going to do for you. Be more like me. Just kidding. Okay. Uh, all right. So instead of needing your attention they find it annoying now this is why um it's better not to let somebody enmesh with you so quick and right away you know you want to have a slow burn but i know i know you fucking people you you love the fast and the fear you love the love bomb you love it you love being shared with attention and i'm not shitting on you man i know but you have to know what you're getting into um and be like i know this is gonna fuck this ain't lasting i know this isn't gonna last and then when it gets to the boring state where an actual healthy relationship of true love and intimacy is supposed to grow that's when boredom sets in on a psychopathic person and then they're going to start fucking with your mind just to uh, create some chaos in you. They need to see that they have control over you and to plant these seeds in your head and then you're like an experiment and then they're just watching shit. Me and my ex, we used to frustrate each other all the time. I, we would fuck with each other all the time. And we're, we're both thinking that I'm fucking with you. You're not fucking with me. It's so fucking stupid. It's so dumb. All right. Um, so yeah, finding it annoying. <laughs> oh God, flashback. It makes me so fucking, uh, it's so funny now, but it's like, I allow these dudes to believe that they have this sense of control and, you know, and then they're just fucking running with it. Like, the fucking stuff. Oh, God. And it's my fucking fault. It's my fault. It's my fault. I know. Okay. I take full responsibility. <laughs> they start seeking attention from other sources. Now, this doesn't always have to be... Um, other people but because of social media nowadays it really is um just seeking uh secondary supply sources attention um from different stupid posts having people admired you or think that you're so fucking funny or intelligent or you know whatever um we the psychopathic people we don't give a fuck about any of these goddamn people it's all just, you know, I'm bored. Give me some attention. For the narcissistic person, I need those supply sources to boost up my self-worth. Um, and, you know, for psychopathic people, it's just complete fucking boredom. So it's, it's so funny just, you know, going back all over. Because um, I was, fuck it. I was going to say that um, when I quit work to be a stay-home mom, before I found out about social media, there was a time when I was um, like so fucking bored out of my goddamn mind. I felt it was almost like it felt like maybe um, I was depressed because I had there was nothing going on or whatever. And then I started getting into spirituality things or whatever and i'm trying to fill this dark hole with that shit and then that wasn't fucking um working and then social media came along and it was like disneyland 
Disneyland. Okay, all right. Instead of needing your, okay, I said that. Uh, they start seeking attention from outside sources, yes. Um, and they can be workaholics too, or just getting very much into their hobby. And But, but the thing is, is that they're annoying the fuck, and, uh, ignoring the fuck out of you. I'm sure it's annoying you too, all right. Your unique ability to make them happy wasn't so unique after all. This is what you are starting to understand that, you know, but they, they wanted me, but I was helping them, but I was their source of making them feel comfortable or lifting them up or taking care of them preparing their food or taking care of their chores or making sure that they always paid their bills, you know, cause childlike people, they're like irresponsible. So you taking care of their responsibilities, uh, being in control of their life makes you feel like they owe you when they are just fucking enjoying you being mommy or daddy. You know? So, anyways, watch out for this shit. Keep your people pleasing shit on lockdown. Just give little fucking sprinkles here and there. You know? Somebody's like, oh, let's go on a big trip. Be like, uh uh, motherfucker. You ain't getting me in your fantasy land and blah, blah, blah. And if you do want the trip and know that it could end soon after, take the fucking trip but don't fall in love with people quit falling in love with people you have to wait until the honeymoon stage is over before you start seeing what was real and what was bullshit okay all right and psychopathic people cannot help but test the fuck out of you and um Remember, when they get bored, that's when the gaslighting games are going to come on or they're trying to make you feel uncomfortable. I love, I loved making people uncomfortable. It's my favorite. Okay. I hope that was helpful. Have a great day. Namaste. Namaste. <laughs>